all good evening and welcome to the Tasmanian Premier League show. Joining me as he does every week is co-host Walter Pless. How have you been, Walter? Very well, thanks, Jeremy. And you? Oh, not too bad. It's good to be back in the seat. And a man who needs no introduction, the best dressed coach in the league, uh, we have with us Ken Morton. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, we've got a fair bit to get through, so we may as well get straight into the action. And the first match we're going to take a look at is the Glenorchy Knights versus Clarence United. There's plenty of action in the first half, Walter. Yes, Jeremy. Uh, Clarence won 2-1 and all three goals came in the first six minutes and that was the ball game. We saw the first one there, Paul Bremner uh, slotting home the opener. Yes, he was coming back after a month out through injury and with virtually his first touch, he took advantage of a Knights defensive error to put them ahead. Can you tell, uh, tell us what you make of this uh, little effort uh, there by Hoogsloot, Ken? I thought it was a bit of a soft penalty, but uh, I've seen them given before as well, and it was well put away by Eagle. Good to see the Knights back in it, and then another blunder in the back line here cost them dearly. Yes, an attempt by Tony Gelalia to pass the ball to a teammate, went straight to Dwayne Walsh, who just takes those with ease. Yeah, he basically had the goal at his mercy there, and he doesn't miss those, Ken. No, he's a good finisher, and uh, he's, he's quite powerful one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and as you said, he put it away well. Well, things got a little heated uh, here in the second half. Um... Yeah, there were a few tackles. Uh, they had the trainers out at various times treating injured players. But it is a man's game, Jeremy. I think the Knights missed Janko Begovic, actually. Yeah, he does, uh, he does offer a fair bit of um, support. And I guess just his, um, his strength in the back line there. That seems Glenorchy did miss him last week. Yeah, they missed his leadership and they could have done with his set-piece routines as well. I think that was evident in the game, Walter. They had some chances from wide areas to throw good balls into the box and test uh, the Clarence keeper, but they never did that. They lacked that service. They did try to use their set-piece involving Jade Clay's long throw-ins, but Clarence were aware of that, I think, uh, Ken, and Hoogeslit was well marked at those situations. Seems as Jali had tried to let off a little bit of steam there as well, I think. Well, without uh, Begovic sort of just in front of him, I think Tony uh, had to sort of lead the line at the back there. A tackle there which went uh, Tony's way. There were a few late chances for the Knights though, Walter. Yeah, they actually had the ball in the net at one stage, but it was given offside. And a lucky, lucky uh, escape back there uh, on the back line for Clarence, just popping it out in time. Hoogslut sneaking around the back post. Yes, uh, Hoogslut is always dangerous, of course, because of his height and size, and uh, you've got to watch him continually. That's one of the tackles there that you mentioned earlier, Jeremy. Uh, the player was able to continue. I think Andrew Brown has to be given credit for the organisation in this game to keep Clarence at it. Certainly, Ken. He does his homework before games like this, and he's an ex Knights player, and uh, he knows the team well. Mate, extremely disappointed tonight. Absolutely shattered. Um, all credit to Clarence, mate. They they took their chances, and our boys is very disappointing. So back to the track this week, and we'll start again. And look forward to next Saturday night. We just didn't play consistent football. It was scrappy. It was just uh, we could last touch was absolutely disgraceful tonight. And yeah, I'm just lost for words. But. It's been a very difficult month for us. We've suffered horrific injuries this season, but the, uh, the young men really dug deep. The game plan suited uh, playing the Knights tonight. Uh, in Knights' deference, they're a fantastic football team. They play great football, and they are the form side at the moment. Uh, I just thought they lacked, it was pretty obvious they lacked leadership of Janko Begovic, and they fell apart. And you, well, Ken, I guess that win would have uh, eased a little bit of pressure off Brownie there. I'm sure he was feeling a little bit of a monkey on his back. Yeah, it was a good win for them. Uh, I think Walter's right. It's, uh, it's a, a big result for this weekend's round of matches. And for Clarence, it's three valuable points and pushes them up in the, to the top six positions. And, uh, yeah, full credit to them. Well, the next game we're going to take a look at is your mob up against Taruna. And uh, no surprises there, 4 nil winners. Uh, we uh, we played well. I was very happy with the performance. We were comfortable on the ball. I have to give credit to Taruna. They were a lot better side than what I thought they would be. They defended deep uh, and showed good organisation and we did have to work hard to break them down. I say we had to work hard to break them down. We, we broke them down but we failed to put the ball in the net. 
But once we got the first goal and the second goal, and then we started to play with comfort. Ken, you must be delighted with Jonathan Lowe's form. Never been noted as a goal scorer, now he's scoring two and three in every game. Mm. Jonathan's worked very hard uh, in the off-season and, and during the pre-season and now on his finishing. Um, as you're well aware, we've moved him off the fence now. He's not on the uh, flanks anymore. We've moved him as a support and striker. And he's, he's relished in this, this role just behind the front player and between midfield. And he's got good vision to make passes as well and he gets into the box for us. He's been working pretty hard in the gym as well, Ken. I've seen him there a fair bit. And you reckon Ben Cousins is cut? Well, if you saw this man with his shirt off, I'll tell you what, he'd, uh, be, he'd have to carry a stick around with him. But he's playing well at the moment. Yeah, no, we're happy with John's performance. We're happy with the team at the moment. We've got a settled side and, uh, you know, at this stage of the, th the season, you're looking for consistency in results and in performance. And the last two games have been very beneficial for us. Ken, not detracting in any way from your 4-0 win, you could have probably reached double figures in the second half? Yeah, take nothing away from Tarun as well. They worked hard and the goalkeeper made 6 7 1v1 saves and we could really have matched uh, the Zebra score of 12-0. 12, 12 Ludford there showing he's deadly from the penalty spot? Yeah, he's, he's the only one that puts his hand up, so I'm happy about that. Ken, I guess you're going to lose a few players in, in the coming weeks. Have you started looking to see who's going to replace them in those sort of key position areas? Yeah, we uh, expect to lose uh, two or three players later in the year. Uh, for how long, we're not too sure. And we're looking all the time, but it's not easy to replace. But we have, people forget we have Toby Woolley, who's from the TIS, and uh, he shows, you know, great skills and uh, if we can have a, add a bit of determination and enthusiasm to his play he can become a big player for us. So we have players within our ranks where we can uh, push people forward. Jai Davids has been out with a little bit of an injury and we expect he'll come back in a couple of weeks time and, and fit and ready to go when we need them. You certainly do have a list that most coaches do envy in the league, um, I guess that'll work in your favour. Yeah, I mean that's, we have uh, Two big squads really, I suppose we have 30 players uh, that cover the first and second team so it's important for us if we want to push for the championship. I think the game went well for us today, um, we missed a lot of chances early on in the game uh, but once we got the first goal and the second one went in then it was pretty comfortable for us. Oh look, we, we conceded in the first half when we were a bit ragged I suppose, we gave them quite a few opportunities and then let in a silly goal basic mistake. Um, second half I think we were a little bit better for the first probably 15 or 20. Um, just dropped away, we just didn't put enough pressure on them going forward really.